you know which criminal went to Alcatraz? Uh, oh. <laughs> Birdman. What do you say? Birdman? Birdman. Birdman. Is that Al Capone? Is it that one? No. Did Birdman go there as well? Yeah, he oh, did. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Find the manager, Birdman? I'll tell me what, do you know which one number two is here? Do you recognise number two? No. no? Do you know which one number two is? A bit closer to home. Poppy's outside. Right, it's the Tower of London, you're right, the Tower of London. For those of you going by, I'm just asking you, do you recognise any of these famous prisons? We've got number one here, where Al Capone went, that's Alcatraz. Number two, it's just it's hitting people, but that's uh, the Tower of London. Number three, do you recognise this one? Strange Ways. You're right, Strange Ways, that's right. Do you remember oh, when uh, on the news a number of years ago all the prisoners they got yeah, out? And, uh, I watched it. You watched it, did you? Yeah, once I was doing this talk, you won't believe this, but a man came out and said, That's Jimmy, that's Paul. And I was in there with Paul, so you recognise them, okay. Number four, now this is one of the harder ones. Do you recognise that one? Again, it's in the British Isles. You know it, right? But normally that stumps people. This is you know this you is know a you know yeah. <laughs> Stay around, you won't get this one though. Can you guess this one? Number, do you recognise number five here, okay, do you know this one here? Okay, so we've got the H-box, that's where, um, in the 80s when there was the Troubles and there was terrorists in Northern Ireland, that's where they went. But number five, this one stumps everyone. If anyone gets this now, I'll give you five English pounds. <laughs> five, do you recognise it? Madam, do you think you can do it? Do you recognise this prison here? No, you're I'll give you a clue, Nelson Mandela went there. Oh, so Robin Island, that's the one there, okay. So, I've asked you today, people of Chorley, do you recognise any of these famous prisons? Now here's a big question for you. I, maybe you have been to prison, probably you haven't. But here's the bigger question. Do you recognise that every single one of us lives in a prison? Do all of us live in a prison? We all carry chains, don't we? Some of us carry the chains of addiction. Some of us carry the chains of bitterness. Maybe someone's hurt us. Uh, some of us carry the chains of, uh, of, of sadness or you've got a broken heart. Do you know there's one chain that every single one of us carries and it's this. You won't like me to say this, but it's the chain of death. Is this right or wrong? Here's a very shocking statistic that I bet you never thought about. 10 out of 10 people die. Is that right or is it wrong? 150,000 people die every single day. And the question is, when you die, when you have that chain, do you know where you're going? Big question, isn't it, for a sunny day in Chorley, but here's a big, do you know where you're going when you die? Because Jesus said there's a place called heaven and a place called hell. The reason I'm out here today is because I want you to go to that place called heaven. So although we all carry this chain of death, did you know this? Jesus also said this, this is the good news. Are you ready for it? If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. And that's the message of the Bible, that here we are, we've got this problem of death. But on the cross, 2,000 years ago, all the wrong things that you and I have done, Jesus Christ died for. Now have a good look at me now, okay? I'm actually a married man. Do you think there's a woman on earth who would ever like to marry this, this mosh? I'm actually a married man. My question for you is, do you think I've ever made my wife cry before? What do you reckon? You think I have, do you? You're right, this man's a sidekick, he's right. I have actually made a cry. So you see these eyes? Imagine everything I've ever seen in my life went on this screen here. Would I be ashamed of anything I've ever looked at? What do you reckon? Now I know I'm a dweeb, I know most people in Shirley could beat me up, but have a good look at these fists now, okay? Do you think I've ever hit anyone before? What do you reckon? I have actually, but now ask me this question. Am I going to heaven? I am, not because I'm a nice person, as you can see, because 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on a cross for my sins. All of my sins, past, present and future, were laid on Jesus, and there he died so I could be forgiven. Here's a big question for you. Did you know that Jesus Christ died for you? And have you been forgiven? Have you come to the cross and asked the Son of God, who shed his blood, to forgive you and to wash away all of your sins, to wash you white than snow? You might say, oh, this man's crazy. Where's the evidence of it? Well, I'll tell you where the evidence is. What year were you born in? Say you were born in 1981, 1,981 years after who? After Jesus. When Jesus died, he was buried, and on the third day, he rose from the dead, and he split time in two to the point where we still measure our calendar after this man who, who, who shook the world upside down. 
please do consider these things. If anyone wants to uh, come and take a, a leaflet, my friend here who's filming, uh, just so that we don't get arrested, because you know, Chris, people just will put us in prison for anything these days. They won't look up, lock up the real criminals, but when a man stands up and starts talking about Jesus, let's get him behind bars, that's what they say. <laughs> but if anyone wants to take a leaflet, just come and have a chat to us. It's really lovely to chat to you today. Please do consider this. I'm not here to hate on anyone. Jesus loves you massively and he wants you to come to him, have friendship and forgiveness of sins. God bless you all. Here's something that's gonna shock you a little bit. Atheist, here's my question for you. What would you think of me if I said to you, Harry Potter is a terrible book? That's what I'm thinking, I'm saying you're correct. You say I'm correct. What if I said Harry Potter is a terrible book but I've never read it before, what would you think of me then? We'd say read it first and then make a judgment. Don't say the Bible's a load of fairy tales, it's a load of nonsense without reading it first. And if anyone's not too embarrassed to come and take a, a portion of the Bible from a street preacher's hand today, you can have it for free. Read it, consider these things. There's a God who loves you, a God who died for you, and he wants a friendship with you. You take this portion now and read the truth yourself.